Welcome back to Let's Play Mountain Blade with Fire and Sword. I'm Nye, and we're going to hope to make some progress today. We only have 13 guys, unfortunately, so we're going to start by trying to recruit some people. We have one NPC to play with, some scythe wielders who are just melee, some mercenary horsemen who are going to give us the cavalry we need, I like cavalry, and pikemen for anti-cavalry. What we really want is some artillery, some people with guns to give us a lot of firepower, so we're going to try to do that. Now, last time, we were actually getting some money. Currently, we have 1984, which is, while a very good year, not quite as much as I'd like to have. Probably going to off-screen getting some, but let's see what we can do with the mayor over here. A lot of the game actually will end up being spent uh, making money, and a lot of things you can do to do so are going to be things like um, raiding towns, looting things. Uh, defeating large armies will get you a big amounts of loot which you can sell later, but unfortunately this takes a while, and really we don't have the manpower to do so. Now we could take a job, and this guy wants us to herd some cattle for him. It takes a long time, we're just going to skip on that. Usually the jobs that the mayors give you are just not going to be worth it. But, grapes are only going to cost 33, Warsaw wants them for 94, that is a decent amount of profit, so we're going to head up and do that. And this is my most hated screen. Here is where we actually pay people. We paid out 79 of our hard-earned money to our men, and we have some left. This screen can end up just hurting your face, it really can. Uh, especially if you don't have a lot of money and need some to pay your men. Now keep in mind, even if you don't have any money, all that's going to happen is you're going to go into debt. You'll have to pay your men at a later date, but you will lose morale if this is the case. The issue with that is that if you have too low of morale, men will actually desert. doesn't matter how long they've been with you. In addition, uh, there are a lot of various NPCs, and each of them have things they don't like. Uh, and, of course, one of that major uh, things that NPCs don't like is not getting paid. And NPCs will leave. And as I've already mentioned, we want NPCs because they will have the skills that we like. So, just going to try to not do that. Okay. So now we're in Warsaw. Made a bit of a profit. Not as much as I'd like, but uh, the nice thing is that the Swedish area, which is pretty much where we're at, is very good for tr uh, trading between each other. Each of them very good at producing stuff and uh, sending off to other ones in the same exact area. For instance, tools here, selling for 250. Coenisburg, which is right down the street, I mean almost literally right there, uh, wants it for, for uh, 446, we can do that. The one thing you're almost never gonna have, which is somewhat annoying, not much we can do about it though, is uh, never really going to have with these big money items like tools. You're never actually going to see a ton of them. You're just going to see a little bit at a time. While the merchant caravan is still in sight and moving on to Coenisburg, let's see if we can rustle up some recruits. As I said uh, earlier, getting recruits is probably one of the biggest pains in the asses that uh, with Fire and Sword has. With uh, Warband, which was my previous title that I was playing with, quite a lot actually, put several, uh, probably at least 100 hours into it, maybe 130. Uh, with Warband, it was easy to get recruits. Every town wanted to give them to you, but I found that with Fire and Sword does not want to give any. So you're going to end up going to the tavern a lot. That said, the guys in the tavern are pretty good. Pikemen, I don't really need any more of them. Because I honestly do not uh, end up getting a lot of, well, melee guys. Really good for storming castles, but when it comes to fighting other armies, what you really want is a lot of uh, a lot of guns and cavalry specifically. We'll get into that when we actually start fighting people. Okay, so now we've learned that selling goods is not tax-free. There's a 5% tax. Uh... Sorry, 10% tax now for every sale we make, which honestly is not that much, but it starts adding up. So eventually we're going to want to spend about 2,000 uh, Thaler in order to get one of those permits. Honestly, though, I'd rather just keep trading. Smoked fish is usually pretty good. Uh, powder is pretty good as well. Linen, salt. One thing you can also do, we want to send big ones. Uh, big, just 
trading uh, things in order to make a lot of money all at once. So if you don't go down to goods, this is actually what we're buying. Buying in bulk gets us a discount. This will actually show you what's available. As you can see, not much. Uh, you can send caravans in groups of 5, 10, 15, or 20. Never seen one bigger than 20, unfortunately. So it looks like we got a good 12 linen. Looks like 12 flour. Powder, only got 6. And uh, fish, just 12. So, probably going to end up sending fish or powder, depending on what I can make real money on. Let's see, can double our money with fish, but it's not going to be much. Powder, not going to make much, make much money at all. Beer is more expensive here than anywhere else. Okay, we can make some money on salt, so let's do that. Tend these to, uh, back to Warsaw. Now keep in mind, it does tend to take a couple of days for their inventory to restock. It can be faster than that sometimes, but it does take a little while. So we can't just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We will actually eventually have to go somewhere else. Yep, no recruits here for us either. What I haven't seen much lately are bandits. I was hoping to see a couple of them get a couple more kills under our belt and level some of our guys up, because honestly, scythe wielders, not what we really want. And we make another profit. Cheers. And see, only 5% of total profit there. Who knows? Warsaw might just like us. Head on to the tavern and see what they have to provide. More pikemen! Because we've established that I actually need some. Ah! Cerebon is actually a pretty nice NPC. He's a doctor, sort of, kind of. So we're gonna get him to join us. He wants 600 dollars, but at that point, you know, at this point, we have that. And we can head and get ourselves some pikemen, because that's exactly what I need right now. Do they have any more goods that we can sell off? Got some flour, got some dried meat. And looks like we're going to supply some beer. Unfortunately, I still only have 12 of them. I might have to go elsewhere. 37 beer. And back to Koenigsberg. See? Just back and forth. What I'm eventually going to have to do, though, is going to have to send myself more towards the other areas of the map. As I showed you before, the map is fairly large, and uh, down here in the uh, Crimean Connet section, is another really good intercity trading set, especially between Ackerman and uh, Bakchisseri over here. So I can work with them as well. Just remember what I'm doing right now, making this money so we actually can do stuff, because right now we've made ourselves a 3,000. Hasn't taken very long at all. Uh, what I'm doing right now is actually not going to help us with anything. I'm gaining no experience, uh, experience off of it. Uh, I'm getting nothing, really. Which is fine, but we actually need to start doing things. Money will only get us so far. Amazing, I know. But money does not buy levels, and that's what we need. What it will buy, however, if we get enough of it, is better equipment. Because the starting equipment they gave us, that pistol and uh, that sword, just not really good. We want something better than that. Make time pass, because if I stand still, nobody moves. And we barely made any money on that at all. We might have even lost money on that. Let's see. Mercenary Marksman. Now that's who I'm looking for. And an NPC I don't know. Let's see. He's some sort of noble. And he's got honor. He's a pikeman. And he wants to be honorable. You know what? I think we can do that. And he only wants $250 to buy a family tree. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm sure I can deal with that. Pub visitors are okay. You can actually fence with them and gain a little bit of money. Basically a bet. Just not really worth it, though. So far, I have yet to win. Ransom Brokers, if we actually get into a fight and you knock your opponent unconscious with a blunt weapon as opposed to killing them, you can sell them to the Ransom Brokers. So far, though, unlike Warband, uh, it doesn't seem to make a lot of money here. 
travelers are very useful, actually. You can use them to find NPCs that you're looking for, specifically uh, your traveling companions. Keep in mind, you have to have actually used them before uh, in your party. If you are to lose a battle, you will be uh, taken as a prisoner and um, dragged around the continent for a while. And usually when this happens, you will lose all of your friends. They just vanish. Now, you may keep some of them depending on how happy they are with you. But the ones that you lose, you can usually get them back for free. And, uh, ooh, hello. Now that is something we can work with. Usually you'll get them back for free, but you got to hunt them down, and they could be anywhere. Uh, they move on about a weekly basis. So travelers are good for that. What you'll also find is while every single kingdom out here right now is... And it looks like Baron Ovici has been looted. Fantastic. Uh, while every kingdom is ruled by a king or queen, there are pretenders to each throne, each of which has a story of their own. Uh, could be they were run out, that something dishonorable happened, and they were denied their inheritance, so on and so forth. You can actually help them to the throne and uh, gain a lot of friends that way. But it's supposed to be long and bloody, and you have to have a decent reputation. And, well, one of the things this is not doing right now is getting us a reputation. Okay, we have made some money. We have now hit 5,000, which honestly is nothing. Uh, we want at least 20,000. But we're going to actually move on and see what we can do, see if we can get ourselves a bit of an army. Right now, my company limit is 59. I have quite a company uh, that I can work on. Okay, and uh, while we're here, you can look over at party skills over here. Well, I've still got trade, spotting, pathfinding, and tracking taken care of. Uh, the priest is taking care of looting. As I said, he's an interesting priest. Sarabun is taking care of all of our healing abilities. He's got first aid and surgery and wound treatment. And Algirdas is going to take care of tactics for us. So let's see if we can get some more guys and we can actually start being useful. Into the tavern, different style tavern, and hey look, more pikemen! The nice thing about the guys in the tavern, though, is they are pretty decent. I'm not going to say they're the best units ever, but they are pretty nice, and they're also cheap. They do not uh, cost a lot until you actually get into the mounted units. Check Loveland for some more units. We're going to slowly make our way towards the Crimean Conant. Quest entry into the tavern. Let's see what these guys have. Oh, I see people. Got a halberdier and a book merchant. Okay, the book merchant, he is extremely expensive. But the books you buy from him are actually pretty useful. You will have them in your inventory, and when you choose to camp, you can choose to take an action and select a book to read. What this actually does is, as you travel, as you fight, you're going to gradually read this book, and once you hit 100%, you get some sort of bonus. Uh, it'll up one of your skills automatically. You don't have to actually level up for that. Very useful, uh, and it's an instant bonus. Battle over here, but we can't help because we're not on either of their sides. There's some deserters, some random NPCs running around. Deserters tend to actually be good at fighting, so unless you know you're going to win, you might want to stick away from them. Uh, they usually tend to be mounted. Uh, they have guns. Not good people in general to tangle with. Book merchant there as well. And like cavalrymen, we are definitely going to accept a few of them with us. Also keep in mind that if you're going to be doing trading like I've been doing, uh, fortresses are not where you're going to want to go. They rarely, if ever, have any goods. Uh, so you remember you have to have at least five to actually uh, send goods anywhere. Lots of flour. We'll be doing a flour run in a second. So it's just generally not good to uh, go to fortresses if you're actually going to try to trade. Rarely works, uh, but not often. More light cavalrymen. Awesome. Got a traveler. And here's Ingri. Ingri is another NPC, and she's going to be one I am definitely taking. Uh, she is very good at trading, which is why I'm going to be taking her. And uh, she's good at shooting things. Keep in mind, one of her requirements, she is not like other women. There are some she'll work well with, but she doesn't like them in general. But we're going to be taking her. She requires $500, but as I said, we have that kind of money. Well, we have accomplished not much this time around. But we do have an extra three NPCs. Our company has almost hit full, and we made some money. So next time around, we're actually going to see if we can get into a fight. See you guys soon.